Welcome back. In this video, I'll be looking at pure mass year two, vectors, part one. In part one of the video, I'll be going through all the key definitions and facts that you need to know for this chapter. In part two of the video, I'll be looking at different exam style questions for this chapter. Let's start off with distance. The distance from the origin to the point x, y, z is given by square root x squared plus y squared plus z squared. The distance between the points x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2 is given by square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. Parallel vectors. A vector A is parallel to the vector B if the vector A is equal to lambda lots of the vector B. Lambda is a scalar. In other words, a fixed number. Vectors in three dimension. The unit vector i as a column vector is just 1, 0, 0. The unit vector j as a column vector is 0, 1, 0. The unit vector k as a column vector is 0, 0, 1. The vector pi plus qj plus rk as a column vector is just P, Q, and R. Let A be the vector 2Y plus 3J plus 5K as a column vector 2, 3, 5. I'm going to show you guys what this vector looks like in three dimension. So here's a coordinate grid in three dimension. The 2 is how much you move along the I axis, or you could say X axis. The 3 is how much you move along the J axis, or you could say the Y axis. The 5 is how much you move along the k-axis, or you could say z-axis. 2, 3, 5 form the vector a, 2, 3, 5, in 3 dimension. Okay, a unit vector in the direction of the vector a is just the vector a hat. It is given by the vector a itself divided by the magnitude of the vector a. In other words, the modulus of the vector a. The vector a to b is equal to O to B minus O to A, where O to B is the position vector PV of the point B. O to A is the position vector PV of the point A. Moving on to comparing coefficients, if PI plus QJ plus RK is equal to CI plus DJ plus EK, then by comparing IJ and K coefficients, we have that P is equal to C, Q is equal to D, R is equal to E. Moving on to resultant force. The resultant force acting on a particle is just the sum of the individual forces acting on the particle. For example, if F1, F2 and F3 are forces acting on a particle, the resultant force R is given by the sum of these individual forces. So we have F1 plus F2 plus F3. Angle between a vector and the X, Y or Z axes. Let A be the vector XI plus YJ plus ZK. I've got three coordinate grids. For each of these coordinate grids, I've labelled the vector A, and I've also labelled the magnitude of the vector A. I want to work out, first of all, theta x, the angle between the vector A and the x-axis. First of all, cos theta x can be calculated using adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is just x over the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of the vector a. x is just a coefficient of the vector i. Moving on to working out theta y, the angle between the vector a and the y-axis. First of all, I can work out cos theta y using adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent in this particular case will just be y. So we have y over hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of A. Y is the coefficient of the vector J. Moving on to the last one, 
Now, I want to work out the angle theta z, which is the angle between the vector a and the z axes. Okay, so first of all, I can work out cos theta z using adjacent of a hypotenuse. The adjacent in this particular case is z. So we have z over the hypotenuse in this particular case. It is, again, the magnitude of a. z is the coefficient of the vector k. That there, guys, is a summary of pure mass year 2 vectors. So this is part 1 of the video. In part 2 of the video, I'll be looking at different exam style questions for this particular chapter. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.